Next is, based on what I've heard from your podcast, it seems like sincerity plays a pretty important role in your lives. How would you describe that role and would you consider it a priority while cultivating your personal relationships? Sincerity, yeah. I mean, sincerity, we talk about uh, what is the word? authenticity, honesty. I'm just sort of treating them similarly. What's the difference? Sincerity is, I think, includes the emotional component of it, whereas honesty is a little bit flatly rational. So I'm working on sincerity. I've definitely tried to be honest and say how I'm feeling. I think sincerity, including the emotional component, is tougher for me. It's easier for me to just describe my feelings than it is to feel them and have them witnessed. But yeah, it's super important. I get very anxious in situations where I feel that I cannot be truthful, authentic, or sincere. It makes me very uncomfortable. I... Uh, yeah, it screws me up. I don't know why. So like I've, you know, part of the reason we have the podcast is because in part wanted to have fun conversations with Ben and in part wanted to express some of the views that I have on politics, which other people don't like because I felt like I need to say this. Too many people are uh, really in love with the cardboard cutout version of Charlie that they see on Charisma on Command. And I, and I need them to at least know some of the political beliefs that I have that would make them not like me. Well, it's interesting because in you said, I don't know where it comes from, but it, you weren't always like that. You were pretty normal in terms of your view of honesty until I think six pillars of self-esteem and radical honesty, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, in high school or even your first job, it, there was a point where you tell a white lie. Yes. And I think, I think where everybody starts with honesty is everybody thinks they're honest. Yeah. They don't think too deeply about it. Everybody. They think that other people lie and they get upset with them. And then what the six pillars did for you is it it's got all these exercises. Like if I was 5% more honest today, I would have. And all of a sudden you have so much to say. You're like, wait a second. I didn't realize in a single day's time that there could be so many fibs and so many white lies and so many adjustments to how I was presenting myself in order to gain an advantage or get my way or make someone like me. Uh, so that, that created an awareness mm -hmm. of the depth of the problem. And then continuing to do psychedelics, it, it, you just go, holy shit. If I'm not honest about this small stuff, which doesn't seem to matter, I'm conditioning my subconscious mind to not offer any of the juicy, valuable morsels that I spoke about earlier today, which are really fucking key to my happiness in life. Um, so it does seem like, to me, I think that uh, my road to feeling more whole, still been, been happy pretty much the whole time, but to feeling more whole and complete has been through telling harder and harder truths first internally to myself and then secondarily to the people who they involve in my life. So yeah, it's been, uh, I still know that there's a lot more, but it's been very important to me. What do you think? I mean, yeah, same. I don't, really, I don't have anything else. Cool. We've talked about this stuff a lot. I feel like if one of us has a different philosophical breakthrough, they'll bring it to the other person, you know? Mm -hmm. And so people will often, they'll say, oh, you guys are so similar, but it's, it's not because we well, we started the same way, but then it's because anytime one of us has like a, hey, six explosions of self-esteem was life-changing, the other person reads it, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I could easily see, and this did happen with other friends growing apart. But I think the reason that often with this podcast can be an echo chamber is because we will just sit down and hash it out. You'll, you know, one of us says, honesty is the most important thing. It's more important than anything else, even happiness. And the other one goes, well, I'll take the happiness <laughs> side. Even if I, you know, even if I, well, I'm just yeah. going to steel man it and we'll just duke it out until we come to, okay, that's the best argument for that. And that's the best argument for that. And overall, it turns out that this is the more compelling of the two, but now we have the steel man for both. Mm -hmm. That's just how we interact. That's how we interact as friends. It's not even something we do on, as a purposeful exercise. So yeah, we're going to have all the same opinions on a lot of this stuff. On a lot of it. And then there's, of course, we have some different baseline experiences, which can point us in different directions. Yeah, yeah. And the most different experiences that we've had that have led to different philosophical takes are the wildly different psychedelic experiences that are completely incomparable. Yep. You know what I mean? So like the things that I think that are most dramatically different from you are rooted in experiences that I have that I can't even transmit to you. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't know what to tell you. Like it's all simulation <laughs> or, you're, or you're telling me that or something. Yeah. And you're like, I find that entirely uncompelling. Do you have any justification for that? You're like, no, no, I just know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's where we've uh, diverged in our that's philosophical words. Thinking. Words can't convey yes. what comes through on psychedelics. Yeah. Last is, you guys wrote a book on Charisma on Command. How come you guys don't talk about that? Why don't I talk about it? So I, I wrote it one. It's funny, man. The book doesn't have uh, either of our names on it, uh, page numbers. It was uh, 
We, I did it. Written a long, long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, in 2014. Um, and then it was, it was. I think it's. I think it's pretty good. I think it could be better. Um, just from a writing perspective, from a presentation perspective. What I also that's got an action guide in there, which was really my first attempt at uh, the idea behind Charisma University, which is let's break this down into days. But I don't think it's as. I think so the exercises are good, but I don't think it's structured in a the most useful way to learn. Uh, whereas I think having gone through Charisma University and redone it, I think four times yep. at this point, I've tweaked it so that it is not just 30 days of stuff to do. It is 30 days starting with a small on-ramp, increasing in stuff that gets a little bit more difficult, but it, like it's purposely, it's very, very purposely laid out. Well, we've learned, I mean, since 2014, we've learned a lot about how to teach. You yes. know, we came in, when we started the business, we had six years of learning charisma and coaching people in charisma, but we'd never learned is how do you convey knowledge in a book or in a mm-hmm. video course? That's something we'd never studied. So yeah, it's it's, Charisma University has had to go through a bunch of iterations and the book has not. And another thing from a business perspective is that, so books, you know, re- typically retail on Amazon for $9.99. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a printed book, you're paying one or $2 to get it printed. Amazon's going to take a cut. You're making like $3 a book. Mm-hmm. If it's a Kindle, you're making like $6 a book. You, in order to succeed and make a business off of a book, you need to either accept that this is not going to make money and is going to set you up for your speaking tour. And then you need to aggressively pursue that and start trying to make, take down five figure speaking things where you do the same hour over and over and over again in different cities in front of different audiences, which is, I've seen people do it. It's not what I want. Uh, Or you need to sell millions and millions of copies and it is not going to be a independently published. You're going to have to eventually get put in touch with Penguin and you're going to have to have a breakout success. Mm-hmm. So given that I thought that was very unlikely and I knew I didn't want to do the book tour, I said, let's let's have a different business model. And the business model that we landed on is we do a video course. It's got higher margins. We can do more because it's a video course. I can like show you the charisma as opposed to describing the event that happened, which was always tricky in the book. I'm like writing, you know, when Bill Clinton walked into a room, I'm setting a stage and it's just easier to see. Um, can't use Bill Clinton. We use, we use interviews from, uh, people that have graciously given us access to their footage. Tom Bill, you, Lewis Howes, we have those interviews are, are in Charisma University with, with the people that they interview demonstrating what they are doing, but I don't have to describe it. You can just see Mel Robbins say hello. And it's, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what it looks like. So from a business model perspective, I thought it was also when you're talking about charisma video just did better. We saw the difference between the blog and YouTube. Um, and so that's why we don't talk about the book. Also, at this point, given that it is from 2014, I don't have a. I'm not as proud of it, so I don't really want to push people there for the reasons that I expressed. Well, this is one of the reasons you reshot Charisma University. Yeah, yeah. Because you, in order to promote it on the YouTube channel over time, when you first made it, you were really proud of it, and then it, you got to a point where you go, "I, if I'm going to endorse this, I have to reshoot it." Mm-hmm. And so you did. You remade it so that you can enthusiastically promote it. Yeah. And I think. If you read the book, you probably have a lot of things that you're changing in yeah, seven yeah. years or, old. Uh, and then I could promote it. And then, you know, I'd have to really do a heavy rewrite and I could then be like, oh, I love it now. And now I can tell everyone about it. And I just don't want to do that. Yeah. We've got other stuff going on. So that's why. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.